Hello and welcome. I'm Nada Malouf, Chief Advancement Officer in the School of Communication. Through our work here at the School of Communication at American University and presentations such as this, we seek to serve the nation and the world as a teaching, training, and research leader in the fields of communication studies, film and media arts, journalism, and public communication. I'm very excited to welcome you this evening as we launch Films Across Borders, Stories in a Changing World. This is our seventh year working in partnership with embassy cultural organizations, arts institutions, and environmental groups showcasing films about the major issues of our time. I want to acknowledge our Films Across Borders partners shown on the screen from around the city who join forces each year to present Films Across Borders. This year's theme of stories in a changing world is especially poignant as we turn our lens on stories of transformation and renewal in all walks of life and across continents. These stories will both inform and inspire us as we forge ahead in what has become a significantly changed and new world for us. On behalf of our partners, we extend a personal invitation to join us at any of these upcoming film events all open to the public in multiple formats this fall. Let's take a look at the preview trailer for our full fall series. conversation focuses on the intersection of sports and civil rights. And we are so pleased that we have not only the filmmakers of the documentary Withdrawn Arms, but also the subject, groundbreaking Olympic gold medalist and civil rights activist, Dr. Tommy Smith. Moderating for us this evening is Sam Fullwood III, Dean of the School of Communication at American University. Dean Fullwood is a prominent journalist, public policy analyst, and author. Prior to AU, Sam was Senior Fellow and Vice President of Race and Equity at the Center for American Progress. There, his work addressed issues of media influences on American life, race relations, data-driven journalism, and the intersection of media technology and democracy. Sam's career as a newspaper journalist, beginning with the Charlotte Observer and continuing with Cleveland Plain Dealer, LA Times, and Baltimore Sun, among others, spanned nearly 30 years. Thank you all for making the time to be with us to have this important conversation. Let's take a look at the film trailer before we begin our conversation. 1968, black athletes were expected to perform and shut up. We were dealing with racism. We were dealing with not having a voice. Running became my voice. I knew something had to be done. My next move would be immortalizing history. He gave 
give us all hope so that too can do something. That's a hero. Is patriotism protesting oppression? Or is patriotism blind allegiance despite everything? It's a whole different thing to square up with white supremacy. Change doesn't happen in America without loss. After that Olympics, he was ostracized from society. When I returned home, the only job I could get was washing cars. One day, a car pulled up. They were FBI agents. Tommy was a victim of a fear of radical thought. Tommy's dreams had to be altered because of that gesture. It destroyed what I loved, running in my family. I hit rock bottom. I needed someone to hold a hand out. I did not recognize him. I said, there has to be a change. Somehow, a Japanese-American artist became one of the captains of Tommy Smith's legacy team. Tommy's salute made such an impact on me that I had to collaborate on a project with him. I said, what if we could make a cast of your arm and then we'll figure out what to make. I thought it was admirable for him coming and doing this. He took a stand with me. Okay. My projects with Tommy allows you to be a witness of this rich history that that salute created. That history is happening right now. How can we not let ourselves neglect the next Tommy Smith? The work that Glenn and Tommy have done is brotherhood. It doesn't matter who you are, we're all in this together. For 50 years, people have been putting words in my mouth. That fist meant pride. It meant strength. It means togetherness. One as a nation. I can't just reach, baby, Thank you, Nada, and welcome, everyone. I can't wait. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. I can't wait to dive into this conversation that we're going to have today. Um, as, a, as a Black man in America who came of age in the 60s and the 70s, Tommy Smith is one of my heroes. And to have an opportunity today to talk about his legacy is one of the joys of my life. I've talked to a lot of people uh, as a journalist, but this is a real highlight. So I'm, I'm really, really happy and excited about that. Um, but before we get to all of that, uh, I, want, I want to introduce our distinguished panel. Co-director Glenn Kaino is an Emmy and Webby award-winning producer and documentarian whose films have been featured at the Tribeca Film Festival and South by Southwest. Most recently, he was recognized on Ebony Media 2021 Excuse Power. me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sam. I just have to interrupt because that's actually Dion's credit, not mine. The Ebony, um, and I, I apologize oh. for interrupting, but but I just oh. has to be shared. That's that, that's young Dion's credit. Okay, so that, I can't. I can't. That's Dion T. Jones that I'm introducing. I apologize. No, no, I got no, no. I, I got Everything it else is great. Just the Ebony. Sorry to interrupt. I'm, oh, I, I, okay. Yeah, just the Ebony. So, um, his his art practice also includes sculpture, painting and performance art that has been presented uh, at the High Museum of Art, the San Jose uh, Museum of Art, Contemporary Art Center Cincinnati, Studio Museum in Harlem, the Museum of Contemporary Art San Diego, and the Andy Warhol Museum, the Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth, Art Space San Antonio, and Red Cat Los Angeles. I got that right now, okay? Yes. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. <laughs> Um, associate producer Dion T. Jones uh, is also a musician, an artist, and we here at American University are proud to say an American University alumnus, who in 2020 received the university's Changemaker of the Year Award. He's a staunch advocate for the right to vote without barriers. Uh, Dion serves on the Creative Council at FAIR Fight, an organization created by Stacey Abrams to end voter suppression and to ensure fair elections. He's also a key proponent of abolishing youth 
jails, once serving as the national spokesperson for the campaign for youth justice. Deion T. Jones. I got that right, right, Deion? That's and correct. In addition to uh, get it in the right place uh, was the um, Ebony uh, Media 2021 Power 100 list. Yes, thank you so much. Sure thing. Um, Co-director Afshin Shahidi is also a distinguished alumnus of our school, is a New York Times bestselling author, Emmy-nominated filmmaker, and award-winning photographer. Born in Iran, where the rich culture was foundational to his work, Afshin migrated to the United States, settling in Minneapolis. There, he began a 20-year collaboration with the late musical icon Prince, helping shape a world vision where as Prince exemplified, anything is possible. Afshin's focus is championing untold stories and bringing to light the rich textures of life outside of the mainstream. Upcoming plans for his new company, Seventh Son Productions, include a uh, two-man show, Icons and Immigrants, and a new literary project. And as I mentioned before, I am so pleased to introduce the subject of this important documentary, Dr. Tommy Smith. In 1968, at the Mexico City Olympics, Dr. Smith broke the world and Olympic records with a time of 19.83 seconds and became the 200 meter Olympic champion. As the Star Spangled Banner played, he and John Carlos stood on the victory podium, draped with their Olympic medals, each raising a clenched fist covered in a black leather glove in a historic stand for black power, liberation, and solidarity. It was this courageous act with the documentary Withdrawn Arms Explores. After a successful track and football careers, Tommy became a member of the U.S. National Track and Field Hall of Fame. He was later inducted into the California Black Sports Hall of Fame and received that organization's Sportsman of the Millennium Award. He later became a track coach at Oberlin College in Ohio and taught sociology. He was also a faculty member teaching physical education at Santa Monica College in Santa Monica, California. Tommy's autobiography, Silent Gesture, was released in 2007. For his lifelong commitment to athletics, education, and human rights, he received the Courage of Conscience Award from the Peace Abbey in Sherborne, Massachusetts. And in 2004, a sports hall bearing his name was inaugurated in his presence at the St. Owen, France in 2018, he received the Dresden Peace Prize. That's quite an accomplishment. I have a few questions to get our conversation rolling and then before the night is over, we'll give you an opportunity uh, to ask your questions. In order to be able to do that, you'll see down below uh, in the Zoom is the Q&A feature. Feel free to type in your questions. I'll see them and I'll be sure to be able to ask our panelists uh, at that point about whatever questions you have. But to get us started, uh, I want to sort of throw out a, a, a conversation yeah. starter, I guess, for us. Um, let's start with the filmmakers. Tell us about the story, behind the story, about how this documentary came about. I, I suspect Glenn is the guy to, to throw that one to first. Um, yeah, well, I'll, I'll recap a little bit of... Um, the story of meeting Tommy and then get quickly into the, to the film. And, and, and I'd say, you know, first of all, thank you, Sam, uh, Matt, Nada, and American University for having us. It's uh, amazing to be on this Zoom, um, but it's very full circle uh, uh, because we had an early supporting conversation over at AU with Simone Sanders, with Tommy, and, and it, you know, it's wonderful to be back. Uh, and, and, and we're very grateful to have this conversation. Um, but it was, you know, Tommy, um, has always been an icon, you know, for, for me, you know, and, and for many years, I had a, a, a small picture of the salute, you know, uh, printed out and taped to the corner of my iMac on my computer screen in my studio. And a friend of mine walks in and he points it, who was an old, uh, one of Tommy's athletes and as that Tommy coached. And he came into my studio and he points at the picture and he says, oh, Coach Smith, you want to meet him? And immediately my, I was like, you know, coach is only something that you call someone who's been your coach. You don't just call 
even if you know someone, a coach, you don't call them coach. And so I said, yes. And to be fair, I didn't know if he was alive. I didn't know anything about Tommy's personal life. I knew what he iconically meant to me. My friend, uh, Michael, walks to the corner of the studio. He starts texting somebody, comes back five minutes later. He says, he shows me the screen, says, they want to meet you. I think, get out of town. Why would they, why would they want to meet me? Like, and, and so right then I pulled out my phone and we um, expedited two tickets, me and Michael, to go, you know, like it was like on a Tuesday and on a Friday where I, I showed up at Tommy's doorstep. Um, you know, in Stone Mountain, and he, he he greeted me at the at the door, and I shook his hand, and we we, we sat down on the couch, and he he played the race, you know, uh, and we had a, a wonderful conversation, you know. As legend goes, hilariously, I met Delois, who was amazing, and we're all you know family now. Uh, but back at the time, I was intimidated. I didn't even know, you know, I wasn't there for anything. And Delois, uh, an hour on the hour, you know, <laughs> cut Tommy off and says, "Tommy, shut up, Glenn. Why are you here?" <laughs> And I said, look, I don't, I'm not here. I'm a conceptual artist. I'm not here to, I'm, I'm here to pitch you any, anything. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to be here, you know, but I do have an observation if I may. And, and they say, what is it? I said, it strikes me that you live in a bit of a time bubble. And they said, what does that mean? And I said, I was born after that happened. So for me, it's always been an image, but for you, it's very personal. You know, as I said, you, you brush your teeth with that, you know, hand and you, you know, you live with that arm and we just know the hand up in the air. You know, and I said, I said, what if we could collaborate you know, on a, on a project that, that, that functions now, you know, allowing this generation to actively understand what it means and, and also allow Tommy to witness, you know, the, 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 the wonderful history, you know, besides being for a long time, many years, instrumentalized just to tell that one story, you know, of those 19.83 seconds and maybe, you know, the 90 seconds of the anthem after. And then maybe if he was lucky, you know, a few recaps of his life, you know, sort of post the games. And so, um, you know, at that moment, we, I realized that there was something bigger there. And so he said, what do you do next? I said, you come to LA and I'll take the, you know, take the arm off your body. He said, what are you talking about? Arm off your body. I said, no, 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 I'm not going to cut it off, but we're going to make a cast of it. And so certainly a few weeks later, we, we, we brought Tommy out there. And I remember we went to a facility that's really experts at casting. And, you know, I remember that whole conversation that we had. We took some great pictures and Tommy cast his arm. And then when you make a mold for the artwork, you make a negative, you know, and then you pour, we pour, um, resin and plaster in there and then so the first one was plaster and then when the mold came out tommy got to see his arm for the first time you know out of the out of the out of the out of his office body you know and and then it was that was a great moment to be around but then what he did was he, he pointed at this bump at the you know right on if you look at the photo you know there's a, a, a bump on his arm right here it's like a really harsh shadow and honestly i always thought it was this bone that we have here because i got this bone and i, I you know it's something you kind of can't unsee once you see it in the photo, once you notice it. And he pointed at that on this on the, on the, on the, on the artwork and he said, well, you know what that is? And I said, no, what is that? And he says, that's a class muscle. I said, what do you mean? He says, you only get that from picking cotton. So when I flex it up there on the, on the podium, I'm letting everyone know that even if you pick cotton, you're up here with me. Right at that moment, I, first of all, I got chills telling you that story right now. I, I, you know, I mean, imagine like I was about to cry when I heard that story the first time and I realized that what I assumed was that there was this depth of storytelling that Tommy was unable to tell, did not have the opportunity to tell. And so my first phone call was to Afshin. And I said, you know, Afshin and I have been partners for, for decades now. We've done a lot of crazy projects, Super Bowl commercials and art museum shows and whatnot. And, and I called Afshin. I said, hey, you know what? You know, somehow you know, an, an unlikely and improbable alliance is happening, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, I am earning the trust of Tommy. And we're going to, I feel that we might be on a ride together uh, to hear some stories and unpack some history that the world um, could benefit from. And, and then I'll, I'll throw it to Afshin, but I called Afshin and, and, and thankfully he agreed and uh, we were on this ride together. So, yeah. And, and for me, one, Glenn shared that, that story that he just shared about the class muscle. And, and when I heard it, uh, I had chills and I'm like, wow. And, and we realized that's probably one of many, many such stories that, that nobody knew about. Um, but to take let, it let, back. Me, let me interrupt just a second, because yeah. I want to be clear about this. You're saying CLASP, C-L-A-S-P, not CLASS, C-L-A-S-S. Well, that's interesting, because uh, we've gone back and forth about which it is. And I think both of them, uh, uh, you know, give it a meaning that makes sense. So... <laughs> uh, I haven't looked... We've settled on, at Sam, because this is conversational. We've settled that it's both. <laughs> right. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, I mean, there, there's the, there's the, uh, there's the, there's the physiology uh, element, and then there is the political element, and 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 uh, we have had long discussions <laughs> about what I heard and what he said, 
in this dialogue. And I think from an artistic slippage and poetics perspective, we always say it in a way that it's both. Yeah. I I I, I don't want to stop your story, Afshin. No, 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 no. Let's let's talk. I've got to have Tommy tell us what it is. <laughs> okay. Guys, it, it's nice seeing everybody, meeting everybody here. And this is a conversation of interest. Uh, that muscle has been with me all my life. And, and I've done a lot of things with that, uh, with that muscle, with that hand. And when uh, Glenn and I talked about it, we did talk about a clasp, you know, meaning strength, meaning power to move, and also uh, uh, from working. Now, I did another type job with that right hand, which also contributed to that muscle. And we lived on a farm and I was a farm kid, worked in the fields all my life, and I milked cows all my life. And, and I would attribute it, some of that muscle to that moving of the thumb with that forefinger, squeezing and pulling. If you do that on your nose, you can feel that hand. If you pick cotton, you can also feel that hand. And of course, if you are a person who like to, to reminisce over your past, it can be a class, C-L-A-S-S. So guys, I'll give you an A for that course. <laughs> uh, add another milking cow to it. <laughs> That's very strategic uh, a situation, but it's been used all my life. I don't have one as big on my left hand because I'm right-handed. But that right hand has done a lot of things. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is class for Glenn. It's class for Afshin and it's milking cows and clasp and class. So, so I'm going to go back to, to Afshin to, to continue yeah. his story that I so rudely interrupted him on. No, 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 not at all. That, that was a, a uh, distinction that, that should have been made. And quite honestly, uh, when I've told that story, I've, I've said both words. Um, and I feel like, you know, uh, both of them are uh, fit it. Um, beautifully but yeah Glenn and I like he like he mentioned we've collaborated on on a number of projects and so anytime Glenn calls uh, uh you know I'm always interested in in what he's up to um and usually the, what, what has transpired in the past is we've had a great time uh and uh usually made something that was meaningful and that we were proud of um and then when he told me that he's working with Tommy Smith I immediately knew um who he was referring to I think if you just kind of randomly say Tommy Smith, no one's going to, going to, without context, no, but I'm like, wow. And it made sense uh, that that was the, the case with Glenn. Um, and so he invited me over and, and Tommy was gracious enough uh, without knowing me, but having built a, a bit of a rapport with Glenn to allow us to film him uh, and, and share a few stories. And that was seven years ago, eight years ago. I don't, I don't remember. Um, in Glenn's studio. And at the time, you know, our, we, we had not made up our mind, oh, we're gonna make a documentary and this is it. Uh, we were just exploring as, as Glenn was as an artist, you know, with the cast and everything else, um, where, where could this go? Uh, and the stories that Tommy told were, were really breathtaking. Um, and we realized, okay, this, this is something different than what I think most people know of the man definitely uh, opened my eyes to a lot that I didn't, I didn't know. Um, I brought my own kind of, you know, uh, baggage to what that image meant, having, you know, being an immigrant and having come from Iran and, and seeing, you know, what to me seemed defiance, uh, I come to find out it was anything but that, but that's what I imagined and then thought about, you know, in, in my country where I'm from, that act would have gotten somebody killed. Uh, you know, especially in that public of a forum. So to be able to hear directly from the, the person who created that, that moment uh, was really special. And so after, after that filming, I'll make this short, we, we said, huh, let's, let's do this some more. Let's see what else um, Tommy uh, wants to share with us. And as uh, the rapport built, and I think his comfort level with, with us, um, and our understanding of, of him, um, we talked about making a, a documentary film and, and, you know, approached Tommy and he was uh, 
he was fully on board. And so, you know, it's been an honor to be able to facilitate because ultimately we, we're facilitating him telling his story. Uh, and so that's the journey that we, that we started on, not realizing it would, you know, be an eight year journey. And, and I'm sure much, much further past this. So how, how did it come to pass that you brought a, a fellow Eagle into the mix of this? <laughs> Glenn, Glenn can answer that because because Glenn uh, uh, found Dion, not found Dion. They met, and he'll tell you. <laughs> you want to tell a story, Dion, or me? I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll tell. I'll tee it up. I'll tee it up. I you can fill in. So I got no. a phone call. Oh, go ahead, Dion. Go ahead, Dion. You can tell. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was in DC, uh, and I spent two years in DC after my graduation from AU, but while I was a while I was at AU, um, I was part of the White House, one of the White House Obama administration uh, internship classes, uh, and ended up spending sort of the rest of my time in DC, either directly in or adjacent uh, to work that was happening directly in the Obama administration, uh, up until the day I left. And when I left, the president and Mrs. Obama's one of their best friends, Michael Stratmanis, who's a mentor of mine uh, during my time uh, in D.C. Uh, and worked in the White House as well, uh, knew Glenn uh, after he had left. He had came in to L.A. and did a stint at Disney before going to help build up the Obama Foundation. I uh, had called Glenn and was like, hey, I got this young guy coming to L.A., and his uh, assignment to Glenn was to beat DC out of me, uh, which was a very needed assignment <laughs> at that time. Um, and I came to LA, sort of the whole DC thing, suit tie, ready to meet this amazing person, Glenn Kino, this amazing artist, and thinking sort of in the DC way as far as like this is a job interview more so, uh, when it really became one of the most impactful conversations of my life. Uh, so I go and meet Glenn in that, in that time at our Hollywood studio. And he said, yo, I don't have really time to talk to you here. Uh, I have a board meeting. Glenn serves on the board of the Hammer Museum here in L.A. Um, get in the car and we'll have the conversation over, the, over there. And he was telling me all the projects that he was working on. And specifically this project uh, with Drawn Arms uh, and being able to you know, work and get to know Dr. Smith was something that I really thought that I could contribute to in a meaningful way, particularly all the things that I had learned and did while at AU. And uh, when he came out, I had sort of like 15 to 20 notes of pages, uh, not only who I could call right now, what we could do right now, ways that I could contribute and, he, and excuse the language, but he said, I don't know who the fuck you are, what you do, but you're hired. <laughs> and for the past six years, um, for the past six years, uh, we've gotten to some uh, crazy good trouble together. Uh, and this is just one of the first uh, big highlights. And then obviously meeting Afshin and uh, all the, everything that we've been able to do, all the magical moments that um, we were able to have came from an introduction from an internship and sort of professional career that I had uh, from my time at AU. Yeah, and, and Dion was very instrumental in, in, in during uh, the making of the film of uh, getting us access to so many people um, just through, like he said, uh, his Rolodex. But um, getting to meet John Lewis, I think, came through Dion. He made that happen and, and quite a few other things. So we were blessed to have him on our team. We're going to I'm going to come back to John Lewis in a minute, but I, let's talk a little bit about the film. Um, and I guess the best way to, to, to talk about the film uh, is to show a clip of the moment. I think that that really is what everybody remembers. So uh, if possible, let's let's see the uh, let's see the moment. We knew that at some point there was going to be a demonstration by the African-American athletes. We knew, we didn't know who, didn't know when, but those of us who were covering the event were ready for anything at any time. The stadium was packed. The whole mood of the arena 
there was a tension in the air. It was a very powerful night. It was a very controversial night. It had to be silent because there was no time to talk. My daddy used to do a prayer every night before going to bed. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And that's what I took to the victory stand with me. I was not afraid because of that prayer of protection. John Carlos and I were together then because we identified the need to stand together, make a stand. I turned to the flag, John turned, my fist went to the sky, my head bowed, and John followed. All these years later, watching that, I get chills just watching that. Dr. Smith, tell us, what was your mindset then? The wars that uh, we had gone through a year and a half before, uh, all the things that had happened uh, resounded loudly but quickly in my mind. The frustrations that I've had with, uh, with having a young son and, and a wife in San Jose, uh, not finding a job. Everything was passed in nanoseconds because there was not very much time. When you hear the first three notes of that a national anthem, something just kind of rises up in some people to let them know that strength is here. Am I represented? If so, how? This what was going through my mind the times I was on the track, especially in practice. Why am I here? Am I here to verify the need to run fast? Am I here to verify the need that San Jose State University is making money off of me because I'm running fast, which is a little different than now because the news now is different that uh, college athletes can have some kind of uh, monies uh, given in their path because and regulations. A lot of things went through my mind as a living creature trying to do better for the entire public entities of, of society. This is what was going through my mind then. This is just the first three notes. <laughs> then my arms went up, knowing that I have to verify my feelings, it has to be seen to strike that black and brown has gone through in a system that didn't recognize them. But this flag flown, the red, white, and blue, it also symbolized black and brown because we died fighting for wars to create an entity of freedom in this country. That was my representation then, and that is what it is now. Represent all, one. But the human right 
experience of it transpired on a global level of freedom because all flags are not red, white, and blue. All lives were not lost just for the American people. This was a world issue. So and once that you had made that statement, um, you suffered a pretty steep price. Uh, and the film really depicts that. It talks a lot about, about that. Um, I'm curious to know, um, how did you manage that? How did you manage the repercussions of the fallout from that? Like the race, one step after each, you continue it to fruition. You give up nothing, even your own teammates, you're there to, to, to compete against. Everything started from zero and it ended at zero. I was running in a full circle, like the human rights issue on that victory stand, the Olympic project for human rights. It was a human nature, but the world knew the black strife in America against black and brown. So they knew. In fact, I didn't have to talk. Thank God I didn't have to talk. It would have been a little bit, a bit different from my stance. Uh, uh, it represented an entirety to eternity. So t today you're, you're a symbolic uh, figure and you're a hero. Do you feel vindicated? I feel like I need to continue work. A vindication to me means, okay, I'm done, let's stop. I don't stop. I only stopped once and that was at the end of that race. But my life continued. So I continued on that, the efforts of what I was there to show, to, 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 to proclaim freedom for all in association with, 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 with conversation, with entities of knowledge. You see, that victory stand was, that one stance was a minute and a, minute and a half of to represent a need to continue, a need to communicate, a need to verify through that vindication of all in one to make even the deaths of so many. And it, 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 it's continuing today and it will continue. It, it definitely is continuing because as I said, I, I am one of many people who were moved by that. We got another clip and I wanna show that because um, uh, Dion was able to get uh, access before he passed away to um, John Lewis, Representative John Lewis, who is another icon, another person that, you know, you, you see him and you get, you get chills as well. And so we're going to put the two together. Let's, let's, uh, let's see the next uh, clip. I was at home, but I remember it like it was yesterday. I saw this tall, young African-American man standing up straight, holding his hand high. He gave us all hope. He helped us all come to that point so I too can do something. I too can make a contribution. I wanna, I wanna ask the, uh, the filmmakers, is this your contribution? Uh, what, what, what did you hope to achieve by uh, making uh, this, this documentary? Uh, I think um, for me and, and, and Glenn had, had said it uh, before, you know, part of Tommy's legacy team. And I think one thing that we realized as we were um, taking meetings and trying to raise money to, to make this film was that so many people thought that they knew this story. They're like, oh, we've seen it. We know it. Yeah. It's, you know, uh, they categorized it as, okay, it's a sports story or or. We saw the other doc um, and we knew that there was just so many other levels and so much more depth to it. And, and unfortunately, the story has remained timely in, in the United States. Um, you know, we're looking at history, but history has been repeating itself over and over again. And, and you know, 
We've seen it play out uh, in the streets and on TV. Um, so ultimately, uh, we wanted people to hear from Tommy everything that he went through, um, what, the, what the meaning was behind uh, his protest, because so many had their, their idea. I had my idea that it was a, you know, a moment of defiance. Um, and for people to hopefully wake up and, 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 and grow and realize, and for Tommy to say, despite everything that I went through as a result of that, there's nothing that I would change. I, I, would, I would take the, the, you know, the, the years of uh, hardship afterwards again to do that. And, and so this was our little small contribution in, in helping him um, tell that story. And for Glenn, I'll, I'll oh let yeah, you, no, I, I'll I, let... I think that I think that 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 is um, you know absolutely sort of a, a, a big part of it. Yeah, you know, I think when we were talking to Tommy and you know getting to know him and working with him, I, one one thing that I think is vital, you know, at this moment is a conversation about storytelling, a conversation about access to stories, uh, a conversation about intersectional mm -hmm. storytelling, and the aperture and lens from which we view our icons, you know, and our monuments and things that we think we know. And, 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 and Tommy, when we first met him, approached our collaboration together with such generosity of spirit to understand that his sacrifice was not only for him and not only for, uh, uh, you know, the community in the 60s, but what his sacrifice means to people now is expansive and is connected, you know, and, and is about a rallying humanity and, and one of the biggest portions was we you know in terms of the simultaneity of class versus class and you know dual meanings you know we live in a moment where everyone is either you know everything is either black or white everything is either yes or no and it's like you can do this or you can't do that and in, in, in actuality there's a lot of slippage between between it and and it's 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 with the generosity of spirit that tommy has approached the world not only with the sacrifice from his own humanity from from his own personal resources but to his emotional resources um, you know, once, mm -hmm. once sort of identify that, you know, it was like, oh, we should, you know, figure out how to bring that spirit to use and uh, our access to, to, to tell that story to the world. Ideally, you know, and I think the film has had a great reception, not just because it's, you know, mining the depth of Tommy's sacrifice, but it's mining it for all of us, mining it so that an intersectional group of people can relate to Tommy and say, hey, you know what? He sacrificed for me and me and me. And then, and, and the, 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 the types of, um, responses we're getting you know from around the world we, we just won the audience award at the Lundenberg Film Festival in Canada you know which is unbelievable that you know the Canadian audience in, in in eastern Canada all felt that they related so much to Tommy's story that that we won the audience award there and they, oh wow we're doing something right you know it's so great if we win the Chicago Black Film Festival you know also uh, but the fact that we won a, a, you know a, a Canadian film festival with primarily you know French Canadian audience in France you know is is uh, is also remarkable and so once Tommy sort of figured out that or, or, or it's not figured out he always knew once we figured out that Tommy's intention because we also talk a lot about intention was to unite the world in his always saying OPHR human rights. And we, we opened up that lens. We felt we were onto something and, and had a new thing to tell, so. I'm gonna, we've, we've got maybe about another uh, quarter hour to go. So I wanna sort of turn our attention to some of the questions that we've gotten uh, from our audience. A Michelle Selman Fisher uh, sent a question in and she sent it to Dr. Smith. You've demonstrated the definition of being woke with your historic stance. What are your thoughts on this new generation of wokeness? Uh, are you saying W-O-K-E in the essence? That's right. <laughs> wokeness. Meaning to be awake. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, th th there's a long statement. I won't repeat the statement because I don't remember it. But what I will <laughs> say about that statement is there's a lot of people who look woke but are not awake. So that that's important one of the big important parts of that victory stand. You see, you didn't have to be there, but you saw it. And I hope you were awakened or woke by what you saw because it represented you. You were on that stand. Maybe you didn't know it. That's called your senses. But you had a responsibility to at least 
understand why it was being done. Otherwise, it was not being done. Since you saw it awoke, then it should have given you, it should awaken you to there's something needed done. What can I do? What can I do to resemble the need to move forward and to make happen the knowledge what you have seen because it's you. Tommy Smith said nothing. Tommy Smith made a statement through his physical being there. What do you think of that statement? Because it's part of you, you who saw it. Yeah. Hope you were awakened by it. I, I'm going to, uh, this question comes from, I think the name is Maeve Ivanovich, and I'm going to pose it to Dion. Uh, what was something that Dr. Smith said while you were creating this documentary that truly stuck with you? Well, we still, we've had a lot of conversations, uh, he and I. He's an honorary father in my life now. Um, I think it's something more so than, he, it's not something specifically that he said, but I think it's something about the process um, that stuck with me around honor and legacy. So in my time, uh, particularly while I was at American, uh, Julian Bond was my senior thesis advisor, uh, who was an iconic civil rights um, leader. Uh, under his tutelage, I interviewed Maya Angelou 20 times uh, for the product that I ended up presenting for his class. Um, as mentioned, I've you know, been able to have close proximity to folks like John Lewis, who I've known since I was 16 years old. And over the past six years now, have close proximity and access to Dr. Smith uh, and through Glenn, who's on the phone now. Um, one of my other mentors is Oprah Winfrey. So these folks who, you know, have made huge impacts on American culture and society, you know, I've been able to uh, sit at their feet. Uh, and the thing about the difference that I feel particularly with Dr. Smith amongst Dr. Angelo, Dr. Bond, Congressman Lewis, is so many people waited to the near end of their life to, to tell their stories or to even particularly people who are younger than me, you know, really dive deep into, you know, who these folks are and were and what they contributed to society as well. Um, the ability to, as Dr. Smith, who's alive and well and probably can shoot a jump shot better than I can, <laughs> the, the ability to be able to not only spend as much time as I've been able to spend with him, but to see him experience um, everything, particularly over the past six years, but even looking back over the past eight years with his partnership with Glenn and Afshane, to see him experience that um, allowed me to really think about even what Jesse said, you know, in our film and sort of to the, to the previous question that was asked. Uh, there was a moment in our film where J Jesse was saying that like, people always like, even particularly if we take it back to last summer, you know, if, if I was with Dr. King, then I would have been out there. If I was in Harlem, I would have been up there with, you know, Malcolm X. Uh, if I was in Mississippi, I would have been at Freedom Summer. You know, or I wish I could have, you know, met Doc, you know, Dr. King or Fannie Lou Hamer, or, you know, sat with Congressman Lewis. And so many of us say it after it has happened or related to history. But Dr. Smith is here, alive, well, now. And the idea, there are so many heroes. Obviously, he had a super iconic moment that is rested in history. Uh, but there are so many folks who that we don't even whose names will never make those history books or we would never make a documentary uh, that contributed to the constant battle and lineage and the passing of the baton of the, the fight for liberation uh, that are still with us and alive and well today. Um, and the fact that it made me actually sit back and really think about how I honor not only the elders in my life, uh, but the ones who are still here 
uh, to tell the story and how, you know, I show that respect and honor that sacrifice. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Lubbers writes uh, for, for Dr. Smith, and I think a lot of people are thinking the same question. Can you say a few words about John Carlos? How has your relationship uh, transpired over the year, and how did the protests affect him? Over the years, John and I have understood the need to be individuals, but one. We were one on the victory stand, and we're still one. It just happens that John has a life and I have a life and we live life differently. I still love a guy like a brother and he is a brother. And, 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 and our relationship is Tommy Smith and then there's John Carlos. Uh, we see each other during the time of need. We don't hang out. I don't even like the word hang. <laughs> it reminds me of too many things. But our, our relationship is very stern. We were both hard-headed. We are both in our 70s, so we are very hard-headed guys. You can tell how we competed that we don't like to lose, period. And uh, uh, I think we'll live. I think we'll die that way. Uh, but John Carlos and Tommy Smith still know each other, and we still move in an action that points forward. Yeah. Um, Brian Smith writes, uh, what, for the filmmakers, what was the hardest part about filming this documentary? I, you know, this is the thing. There, there, there's hard and there's hard. And, and I think that the hardest part was like us just believing and being tenacious and continuing on in, in, a, in a wave of uh, people saying no uh, for, for, you know, almost a decade. You know, and, and, and I say that, you know, because everything is um, hard. It's hard to get into the White House. It's hard to, you know, convince Wheaties to put a you know, icon on a Wheaties box that haven't done and recorrect history. It's hard to, to talk to Brent Musburger and ask him to, 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 to talk about the past. And, and all of it is, uh, none of it is easy, you know, but, but I think, and, and, and as F. Sheen and I have often said, you know, we were, we were, we finished the film while we were fundraising to make the film, <laughs> you know, and, and so we, we just continued to go and, 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 and say yes in sort of a, a, a wave of no. So I, I would just say that the hardest thing is, uh, you know, I know for all the, uh, the young creative people out there watching this, you know, project and people at AU, you know, it, it's like, we, we, we are also uh, hard-headed and stubborn. Uh, and I suspect, first of all, that Tommy didn't get stubborn when he was 70. I suspect that you and John were stubborn uh, in your 20s as well, maybe even earlier than that. But I think all of us on this call represent a stubbornness because it represents a commitment to our action and our principles, uh, you know, and, and, and a vision that we all share about a better world that we can then help contribute to hopefully in the slightest possible way, um, encourage people to help us and help each other uh, create together. Um, and so uh, the hardest thing is to just continue to fight on. I, 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 we could go on forever, but uh, our hour is drawing to a close, and so I want to I want to conclude with a uh, with a thank you uh, to 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 Glenn, to Dion, to Afshin uh, for for making this evening possible, for making the film, for uh, films across borders. All of us uh, at American University are very very proud. Uh, to be sponsoring this today. And uh, thank you for, for your participation here tonight. Um, Dr. Smith, we really appreciate your being with us. Uh, this has been a wonderful conversation uh, and it, it's a personal pleasure for me. And I'm sure that judging by the, uh, the reactions that I'm seeing uh, here, a lot of other people share it. I wanna give a shout out to my colleagues for, for their behind the scenes work on this. Uh, Matt Selecki, Lydia Schneidler, and uh, Nada Malouf, thank you all for, for uh, pulling this together and being here with us uh, tonight. So uh, thank you. Thank you all very much. I'm going to uh, turn it over to Nada for the, for the last closing words. Thank you. Thanks again, everybody, for joining us this evening. It was a wonderful event. I hope you all uh, will join us for future Films Across Borders events. Have a good evening, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you so much.